Uh, good morning. Uh, unfortunately, the first author couldn't be here, so uh, I am the second author and I will be presenting. So uh, we are introducing a diffusion-based negative sampling method for graph learning. All right, so uh, the problem we are dealing with is uh, link prediction, and link prediction is a fundamental task with many applications in social networks, in recommendation, and so on. And uh, many modern approaches uh, utilize uh, contrastive learning. And in contrastive learning, we aim to learn uh, node representations through using positive and negative examples, right? So. Uh, the issue with uh, negative sampling is that there is a very huge search space and it's easier to get a lot of false negatives because uh, a graph in a graph, the links are typically incomplete. Even though you do not observe a link between two nodes on the graph, they could be uh, actually a positive pair, right? So if you just do a random sampling, you may get false positives, I mean false negatives. So that's why we decided to uh, study negative sampling for this uh, link prediction task on graph. And uh, in existing approaches, most of them are heuristic or using some uh, uh, generative methods such as GANs. But uh, the problem with these approaches is that it's, um, they are inflexible and you cannot easily control the quality of the negative nodes. So that's, that motivated us to um, propose a so-called multi-level negative sampling strategy. So in this multi-level, we try to have a flexible range of negative samples of different difficulty. And then how do we find sufficient negative examples for different hardness? Uh, most existing approaches, they are limited from the observed graph. So that means you can only sample the negative nodes from the graphs that you have observed. Okay, but uh, uh, in our case, we propose to use a diffusion model. So in diffusion model, we can generate many samples, right? And uh, we can flexibly control the difficulty level of the samples. So this is uh, leads to our uh, uh, method called DMNS which is a diffusion uh, model for negative sampling. Um, so in this uh, approach, uh, we have the GNN backbone, right? A graph neural network, which can uh, learn representations of the nodes. And uh, the representations learned from the nodes will be passed to a conditional diffusion model, right? So this diffusion model will generate the uh, negative samples. And then finally, the negative samples together with the positive samples will be input to the link prediction loss for the final optimization. Right, so for the GNN encoder, the backbone is flexible, right? It can be any graph neural network. And the conditional diffusion process is um, a, a, a standard process, right? So it can contains two uh, processes. One is the forward process. In the forward process, we gradually add noises to the nodes, to the node embeddings, all right? And in the backward or so-called reverse process, we try to do the denoising, right? We try to predict the noises and remove the noises in each step. Right, so the, uh, this is the diffusion loss I mentioned earlier. So we try to uh, predict the noises. And then uh, this comes to our multi-level negative sampling. So in multi-level negative sampling, we, have, we can control the difficulty level of the negative samples by using different timestamp t, right? Because in the diffusion model, the noises are added to the uh, node embeddings step by step. So in each step, we can add some noises. So if we, tr we choose an appropriate T, we actually get a node a sample that's uh, uh, either very similar to the starting node, or it can be quite different, right? So if it's similar to a positive sample, then it's typically harder, a harder example. But if it's uh, less similar, it's uh, 
easier example. And then we uh, use a typical link prediction loss, right? So here uh, we have a query node, let's say V, then U is a positive node, right? So the goal is to make V and U to be as similar as possible. But at the same time, we want to make V to be different from the negative nodes. But for the negative nodes, we have two kind of negative nodes. One is we still employ some uh, real negative nodes, those nodes that are actually sampled from the graph, all right? But we also supplement it with uh, our uh, multi-level negative nodes. So in this multi-level negative nodes, we generate the embeddings from the node or from the diffusion model, all right? And uh, we set t, the time step, to different values, all right? Okay, so uh, this comes to our experiment. So we employ uh, a few standard graph benchmarks, and uh, uh, we consider four cases, four categories of baselines: the classic graph neural networks, right? Then heuristic negative sampling methods. Okay, for example, like uh, PNS is a popularity weighted uh, negative sampling, right? DNS is some kind of dynamic strategy for negative sampling. Right, and MCNS is a, is a kind of a Monte Carlo based method, and then we can see the other generative negative sampling, including GAN based method. So in fact, all the three methods here, graph GAN, ARGVA, and KB GAN, they are all GAN based, right? Uh, then we also consider some uh, other um, link prediction approaches, like subgraph based methods, like CO and scaled. So here is the overall performance. So as we can see, uh, our method has the uh, best performance consistently across uh, different data sets on different metrics, right? So here we are using a ranking matrix because we treat the link prediction problem as a ranking problem. So given a query node V, can we rank the positive nodes higher? And uh, our method is actually a plug-in, okay? We, our GN backbone can be any GN encoder, right? For example, it can be a graph attention network or it can be a graph stage, right? So by pairing with different backbones, we can enhance the negative sampling capability. And in each case, we had uh, improved performance. All right, uh, so next we have some uh, ablation studies, right? So uh, earlier I, I didn't talk too much about our method being conditional or weighted. So, uh, but uh, basically we, uh, our method is a conditional diffusion model. The input is conditioned on the query node, right? So as we can see here, if we remove the condition, the unconditioned method, the gray bar is actually lower. And then uh, what's more important is the sampling, all right? So if we just use one kind of negative samples, so you can see each bar here, each color, is the negative sample generated at a particular time step by our diffusion model, right? So if we just use uh, one kind of uh, time step, that means your difficulty level of the samples are fixed, then their performance is not very good. But when we mix all these uh, different time steps, which is what we call multi-level negative samples, right? They have varying difficulty level, then the final performance the, the red bar here is a mixture of all the negative samples, and they actually have a significant improvement. Uh, we also give some visualization of the embedding. Okay, so uh, so in this uh, uh, diagram, the red bars here on the left, they are. Um, Maybe, can I change the pointer? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. This is better, yeah. Okay, uh, so the red one here is the positive notes. So it means they are nodes that are actually linked to the uh, query node. And then the blue, orange, 
green and this brown color here are actually uh, negative samples of different different difficulty level. They are generated by our diffusion model at different time steps. So as you can see, those with different time steps, they have different distance to the positive nodes, or to, to the query nodes, sorry. Yeah, so the x-axis is actually the distance, right? So you can see if the uh, t time step is smaller, like t, divide, t over 10, this blue bar, they are very close to the query node. But on the other hand, this brown portion here is uh, further away from the uh, query node, right? So they are considered as easier examples. So by doing this, we have a, a mixture of both easier and hard examples. So that's what we call a multi-level negative sample. And in comparison, we also have a, a uniform uh, negative samples. So the uniform negative samples are uh, negative samples randomly selected from the graph. And we can see the uniform sample, say, actually is very concentrated in terms of the distance to the query node. So if we only use random, uniform random samples, then the choice of the difficulty level is uh, very limited. All right, so in, conc in conclusion, we study a problem called multi-level negative sampling for graph link prediction, right? So the motivation is to generate negative samples of different levels of difficulty. And we uh, achieve this by consider a diffusion model, right? Because uh, compared to other generative models like uh, GANs, diffusion model allows you to easily control which time step you want. And different time step would give you uh, samples of different hardness, right? And uh, um, in the paper, we actually also explore some theoretical aspect, which I didn't present earlier, right? But if you are interested, you can uh, look for our paper. So in the paper, we actually showed that uh, the negative sample we have uh, generated from our diffusion model follows this sublinear positivity principle, which is an ideal property for the negative samples on the graph. And finally, we did extensive experiments to demonstrate the effectiveness of our uh, diffusion-based multi-level negative sampling. All right, thank you.